Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're continuing to investigate the basics, the fundamentals of multiple linear regression, and uh, the topic of our today's tutorial is the F-test, how to derive the F-statistic for the significance of the whole regression model, the concepts of explained and residual squared sum, and how to calculate the R-squared. We'll further delve into unpacking the black box of the Linest function in Excel and the data analysis pack for regression analysis. And just to spice it up, our today's example revolves around economic growth in 131 countries in 2019. So we have got the GDP per capita growth figures for 2019 and a set of plausible candidate variables. That is, log GDP per capita, so initial conditions, we'll test for convergence, whether poorer countries do catch up with richer countries, that is, they grow faster than richer counterparts, and um, some classic um, regresses such as gross capital formation, foreign direct investment, inflation, and government spending. And we'll determine whether those are significant determinants of economic growth in our representative sample of countries. So first of all, let's retrieve the estimators of our coefficient parameters. And uh, that we have already touched upon in prior tutorials, but just to recap, it can be retrieved using this matrix multiplication formula. You can select a column vector of your coefficients equal to the number of parameters you have got. And uh, if you note, we have got a column of ones to derive our constant in the regression. And uh, we have got five independent variables. So we'll have six coefficients to estimate. So we select a column of six parameters and use the matrix multiplication function. So first of all, we need to find the inverse, so M inverse, inverse matrix, of the product, so a mult, of a transposed matrix of independent variables, including the constant, over here, just like that. And then we multiply it on the right by the non-transposed X matrix of independent variables. So we can close that, and then we can multiply it further on the right by the transposed matrix of X. So we can just copy it here for brevity. And then finally, we can multiply all of that on the right by the column vector of the dependent variable Y, which is our GDP per capita growth. And we can enforce this bulky matrix multiplication formula using shift control enter and get all of our coefficients over here. And if we compare those results to the ones that we would have obtained from our regular linest, so we can select a six by five area over here and enforce the linest function, uh, as usual, just selecting the dependent variables first, then the independent variables without the constant, then adding one so that Linus calculates the constant regardless, and one for additional statistics that we'll try to match with our own calculations today, and also enforcing it using shift control answer. And we can see that the coefficients we have obtained do exactly match the ones we obtained from Linus, which is a good sign. And in the previous tutorial, I also showed you how to match the standard errors using the covariance matrix that you can calculate using this particular formula. And we'll briefly touch upon that a little bit later as well. But what we are most interested today is to match those um, cells over here. This cell, so the third row, the leftmost element in the third row, gives you the R squared of the model. So the proportion of the variance of the dependent variable that can be explained by the independent variables that you have included into the model. The fourth row, the leftmost element of which gives you the F statistic for the significance of the whole model. The last row, the fifth row, gives you the explained squared sum and the residual, the unexplained squared sum of the model. The rightmost element in the fourth row gives you the degrees of freedom of the final model. And finally, the rightmost element in the third row gives you the regression standard error. That is, the average error of your regression model in total, not the standard errors of individual coefficients. And we can quite easily 
retrieve them just using some basic Excel logic. Well, first of all, we can determine the number of the degrees of freedom in the model quite easily. First of all, we can count the number of observations by just counting the number of elements in our dependent variable array. And we have 131 observations, 131 countries. That's not uh, something surprising. Then we can count the number of linear restrictions we impose onto the dependent variable in our regression model. And those linear restrictions are just coefficients we've got, including the constant. So we can count the number of coefficients we have just calculated over here to get the number of restrictions. And the degrees of freedom of the model is just the difference between the total number of observations and the number of restrictions we have imposed. And uh, conceptually, or even philosophically, you can think about degrees of freedom in the following sense. We, in regression analysis, interpret our dependent variable as a random variable. And uh, if we do not impose any restrictions in terms of coefficients, we can treat our economic growth in 131 countries as uh, some space, uh, 131 dimensional space of random variables, each point of this space characterizing some state of the world. And if you impose linear restrictions, you reduce the dimensionality of this uh, random variable space, and that is exactly what degrees of freedom stand for. But without further ado, we can now calculate, using our coefficients and our independent variables, the predicted values of GDP per capita growth in each of our countries. And to do that, we can just use a mult once again, multiplying the row of variables, including the constant over here, by the column vector of coefficients we have calculated over here. And we can just lock the rows so that coefficients do not change observation to observation, and we can enforce this using shift control enter. And then we can bottom like it all the way down and get the predicted values of economic growth for all of our uh, countries. And we can see that we have overestimated what the economic growth is in Afghanistan, and we have quite underestimated what it is in Armenia. So we try and explain some of the variation of economic growth, but quite unsurprisingly, we do not get it precisely. So here we can compare the explained squared sum and the residual squared sum. Explained squared sum is the variability of the dependent variable that you do explain using your regression model, and the residual squared sum is what is left unexplained by the model, and the relationship between the two can tell you how good exactly your model is, and whether it's significantly good, whether it explains the uh, fluctuations of your variable uh, better than nothing, pretty much. So we can calculate the predicted deviations of our model from just the average of economic growth across the whole sample. So here we can just lock the rows and get predicted deviations. And we can see that they quite naturally sum up to zero because the regression model gives you un unbiased uh, estimations. And then for the error, we can just subtract our predictions from the actual values of the uh, dependent variable. And we can bottom click it all the way down as well. And now we can finally calculate, first of all, our explained squared sum and our residual squared sum. The explained squared sum is just the squared sum of deviations of our protection from the mean. So just apply the sum squared function to this particular array, and we get roughly 138. And then for the residual squared sum, we can apply the sum squared function to the column of our errors, of our residuals, and we get roughly 1,000. And we can see that those two values do perfectly match ones obtained from the Linus template. So we have actually uncovered what's going on in this black box quite well. Then, to determine the standard error of our regression, we have got to adjust our residual squared sum by the number of the degrees of freedom, and as it is a standard error, a standard deviation that is, we've got to take the square root. So we can just use the square root function and divide the residual squared sum by the number of the degrees of freedom in our model and get roughly uh, 2.85, meaning that on average our model deviates from reality uh, by 2.85% in terms of economic growth per capita. And that's exactly what this particular cell gives us in the Linus template. And now we can finally calculate our R squared and our F statistic. So the R squared is just the proportion of the variance of the dependent variable that we are explaining with our model. So quite naturally, we can just divide the explained squared sum, the explained variance, by the sum of the explained and unexplained variance, which is the total squared sum. 
You could also see formulas uh, expressed in terms of ESS over TSS, that is total squared sum. And we get our R squared uh, at roughly 12%, meaning that we explain 12% of variance. And that is exactly what the Linus template is giving you. And then these uh, figures that we have got over here can be used to determine how significant our model is in terms of interpreting the dynamics, the fluctuations of economic growth within countries. And uh, that's exactly what the F statistic stands for. And you can calculate it using two different ways, either using the explained squared sum of the residual squared sum, or which is equivalent mathematically by using R squared. And this way is um, quite a bit more common. So let's stick with that. So in the numerator of this formula, we'll get our R squared of the model divided by the number of parameters minus one, which is um, due to the fact that the constant does not explain any of the variance. So we have got all non-constant parameters uh, here. So we basically uh, calculate how much of the variance do you explain per parameter that you include in the model, which is quite intuitive. And then you divide it by the residual variance, what is left unexplained, so one minus R squared. And you adjust it by the residual degrees of freedom, which is basically how much variance is left per degree of freedom. And we compare those two uh, quantities by just dividing them one over the other. And the larger this quantity is, the more significant our model is, quite intuitively. And we can see that this F statistic exactly matches the one given by the Linus template as well. And now for our p-value, to convert our F stat into a p-value, we can use the fact that this statistic is distributed as an F distribution with k minus one and n minus k degrees of freedom. So we can use the F distribution right tailed, inputting the F statistic and the degrees of freedom. The first number of the degrees of freedom is k minus one. So basically five, six minus one. And the second number of the degrees of freedom is 125, the residual number of the degrees of freedom in the model. And we can close the brackets and retrieve the p-value of 0.66% meaning that our model is significant at 1%. It explains the fluctuations of economic growth across countries quite well. So this model is something that you can fruitfully use in your studies. And that's all there is for the explained squared sum, the residual squared sum, and the R squared, and how you can use them for the F test to test the significance of the whole regression model. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.